training your farm dogs to be around and associated and comfortable with other small animals on your farm is very important. And that's the topic of today's episode. Morning guys, welcome back to the farm. <laughs> I just finished harvesting the breakfast for the new pigs. <laughs> Let's go and say good morning. Start our day off right at the farm. It's a beautiful sunny day. Oh, beautiful. You wanna say hi to the pigs? Let's go. How about you, Bubby? You okay, Billy? Huh? You okay, Billy? How do you like your new boyfriend? How do you like your new boyfriend? You're pigging out, eh? Bobby! You okay, Bobby? Come here, buddy. Bobby! Good boy. Okay, who wants to go outside? Kind of have to fix this door. Pigs are too busy to go outside this morning. I guess they want to eat their breakfast first. They really like that mesculine lettuce, eh? They go at it very fast. And the new guy's doing pretty good. He's holding his own with the big girl, Billy. <laughs> so far, it's pretty fun having pigs, I'm telling you. <laughs> we'll let them just eat their breakfast. Oh, I think they're going out now. <laughs> Maybe they're full. <laughs> They'll be back. They can go in and out here all day long. I just bring them in at night, eh? Chunky, where are you going? Chunk! I see ya. Chunky, what are you doing down there, brother? You okay? What's the matter with you? Why are you doing that to Olive? Why are you doing that to Olive? Ah, buddy. What are you doing? Hey, buddy. Molly, what are you doing out there? Molly, come here. Molly. So you're right here, bud. You okay? Billy! <laughs> Bobby! Olive, you want to go in? Hey, are you going to be good? Are you going to be good? Okay, let me open up this gate.
Olive, out. 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 Olive listens most of the time. Sometimes I gotta tell her multiple times to do something. But, I mean, for the most part, she's a good dog. She's just very excitable, you know? She's still young. She's only seven, eight months. She was born in January. So I guess she's eight months. <laughs> there are a few different types of farm dogs. One being a livestock guardian dog, and that's not what these dogs are. There's also, you know, hunting type dogs. There's herding dogs. These old English sheep dogs, they come from their herding line. Although we're not using them on the farm to herd, it's very difficult to train a dog to herd actually. And I don't have the time or the patience to do that because we're still in the building of the farm mode. But these two dogs are just our companion dogs here on the farm. We love them just as much. They keep me company anywhere I go. They don't have any job to do, although they think they do, but they're just free to roam on our farm and I like it that way. One thing I haven't really done yet is introduce these two dogs to the baby bunnies. I did when they were like infant bunnies, you know, like hairless. But since they've been hopping around, living their own life, <laughs> I haven't done it. Afternoon, buns. <laughs> you, you want to escape? You okay? Be nice. Nice. I think that's enough bunny training for the dogs for one day. You okay, kiddo? Those dogs are scary, eh? Training your dog takes a lot of patience and it's very important to take it easy on whatever small animal you're training them with. You gotta do it in small increments, you know? I just use 10, 15 minutes at a time, and then I take the dogs out. If the dog's getting too rowdy, the animal's only gonna get stressed out, and that's not gonna help you during your training. Bobby, you're way too young to mount her. What are you doing, buddy? You're never gonna make it. <laughs> you're never gonna make it, you're too small. Be nice. Be nice. These rabbits have really destroyed my habitat already. They've chewed up all this wood. They, this was all soil. They've unburied all the soil. They've unburied all of my, my pipes. This was all covered with soil and they just unburied it all. They're digging all over the place. But that's what rabbits do. That's why I built this habitat like this. I can just add soil if I want. <laughs> so far, so good in this place. No complaints. Olive, that's enough. Let's go. Olive, let's go. Molly, out. Let's go. Out. Olive, out. Good girls. Good girl, Molly. I got some of this lettuce for the rabbits, too. <laughs> Because the rabbits just love the greens. Here you go, girls. I started putting the battens on, you know, because I gotta get ready for winter. Winter's coming fast. And I still have a lot more to do on the other side, but the front, this is how the final look is. So it's not too bad. I'm pretty satisfied. I got the window all trimmed in, the door all trimmed in. I have like a nice bead of caulking all along here. And I mean, it's as good as it's gonna get. You know, it might seem strange to some why I bring the dogs in to see all the animals. I pretty well do it at least a few times a week. And I do that so that our farm remains harmonious, you know? And I don't want the dogs to go after any of the animals and doing that from such a young age, you know, helps to prevent that. And I mean, I also like sharing the story with you guys. We are producing these videos for YouTube for you guys to watch our channel. So, you know, 
I try to make the most enjoyable content as possible and not everybody has a farm and a lot of people dream of the farm life and you know some people can live through us so to speak. I also quite enjoy it. <laughs> I love to see how the dogs interact with you know like all the animals. And we just got Billy the mini pig a while ago and now we have Bobby the mini pig and I mean I really want the dogs to get to know them and I want them to get to know the dogs because at some point they're you know they, they need to live in harmony. <laughs> One technique I used when Olive was a younger pup is that I kept her on a leash and I gave her a little bit more length the more comfortable she got with the ducks. I did this specifically in the ducks and the geese pasture. And it worked great because it allows me to control the dog. And if she feels the need to chase, I'm in control because I have her on a, on a lead, eh? I think Molly don't care for these goose honks because honestly the goose don't really shut up when they see the ducks coming out first. It's like they get mad. <laughs> get in here and check our meat birds. I think they're getting close to butcher weight. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. How you doing chickens? You guys okay? The ones that I'm going to butcher are nowhere near butcher weight and there's a couple of really small ones. But the two white ones and a couple of the hens, I gotta integrate into the flock. So I think they're getting close to the size that they can do that. It's always a fun time at the Hidden Spring Farm. Some dogs have a very serious prey drive and that just, when they see something moving quickly, it triggers the chase sensation and they just feel the need to chase. That's another reason why this Old English Sheepdog breed is great around other animals because they have a very low prey drive. In fact, Old English Sheepdogs have one of the lowest prey drives amongst all dog breeds. Dexter! I see ya! Hey buddy. Gotta protect him from Olive. Olive wants to give him kisses and he don't like it. So he swats at her, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dexter, look at him just hanging there. He's so happy just hanging there. Me and Dexter just hanging out at the farm. It takes a lot of work, you know, a lot of training, a lot of patience to get your dogs to a state where they're comfortable with other small animals. They need to be socialized and it's very important for me anyway. And we also have the Junior Claw Crew, which are four kittens from Maggie Mae. I mean, they haven't been outside yet. They haven't really been introduced to the dogs. When the dogs go around the cage, they kind of freak out. So that's going to be a little bit of a work in progress. A lot of times when we talk about training our dogs to be around small animals, there's definitely more of an emphasis on the dog part and not the other animal part. But I believe 
in finding a happy medium between the two. Yes, I have to train the dogs. I have to train them not to chase, not to kill. Be nice, be friendly, protect them, love the dogs to the other animals. There's also training happening from their point of view. They're seeing this other bigger animal and they may see them as a predator and the longer that the dog is able to stay calm around these animals the other animals will stay calm also they'll stay focused so you're training them at the same time regarding the specifics of the training of the dogs to enjoy the company of the other small animals there's not really much to it i mean a quick explanation is that while the animals are still young, I introduce them to the dogs and I keep doing that over and over and I praise them when they're doing good and I scold them when they're running after them and over a few weeks, couple of months, they really get to know that these guys are family. Not all dogs are suited for farm life either, but these old English sheepdogs have been bred for centuries to be farm dogs. You know, they live out with the livestock and they just protect the sheep. That's why they're called a sheepdog. You know, they herd them, they help them, they protect them, and they're just amazing all around farm dogs. And if you're looking to watch some more of life on the farm from a dog's perspective, here's a great video below. It's all about Olive and how she was really meant to be living on a farm.